Welcome to Tech World, your quick roundup of some of the top technology news stories from across the globe. This month, we bring you the latest on the Facebook and Cambridge Analytica fiasco, YouTube's alleged breach of child protection laws, and much more. For this episode's Hot Topic interview, we spoke to EUI's Rob Atkinson about the firm's smart home survey results. First, though, here are your top international stories. Facebook has told members that they were among the 87 million potential customers whose data was shared with Cambridge Analytica, the data mining firm accused of using users' personal details for political purposes. Facebook has said every account holder will receive one or two notifications, informing them whether their data had been compromised or not. Aside from the Cambridge Analytica fiasco, Facebook has also suspended Kubu, another data analytics firm ahead of an investigation to ascertain whether the company collected data for academic purposes and then used it for commercial gains. Kubu and Cambridge University say they made it clear that the data was being used for both academic and business purposes. In other news, video sharing giant YouTube, which tragically bore witness to a shooting at its San Francisco Bruno HQ in California earlier this month, has been accused of violating child protection laws in the US. Coalition of 23 consumer child safety and privacy advocacy groups filed a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission, alleging that YouTube was collecting data from children younger than 13. The complaint said YouTube was skirting the law and profiting off children without parents' knowledge or consent. Thousands of Google workers have signed an open letter requesting that the internet company cease working on a project for the US military. Project Maven leverages AI to improve the precision of military drone strikes and employees think Google's involvement will result in irreparable damage for the firm. The open letter addressed to Google chief exec Sundar Pichai said the employees believe the company should not be in the business of war and therefore requested that Project Maven be cancelled. Additionally, employees asked that Google draft, publicize and enforce a clear policy stating that neither Google nor its contractors would ever bill warfare technology. That's it for our top global tech news roundup, but keep watching to see this episode's Hot Topic interview. We spoke with Rob Atkinson from EY about the firm's smart home survey results. So hi Rob, thank you very much for joining us today. So EY recently conducted a consumer survey about smart home product adoption. Can you tell us a little bit more about that please? Yeah, so uh, we recently published something called uh, Decoding the Digital Home. Uh, this is the third piece of research that we've done uh, over the last number of years, looking at the content and connectivity of, of the household and, its con uh, and the consumers and how they buy and, and the behaviours they have towards content they consume within the home. On that note, what um, smart home products are likely to see the most adoption over, say, the next five years or so? Well, what we're seeing today is that the principal categories that are getting a lot of interest from consumers and where, where the money's being spent is in smart speakers, uh, digital home assistants uh, and, and smart watches. Um, what we see in the research is that actually over the next five years, there'll be three new categories that, that uh, probably overtake those and leapfrog them completely. Uh, and that's likely to be um, the likes of home security, lighting and heating controls. Uh, and a third of the people in the research believe that they will buy those sorts of products in the next five years. Interesting. So who are consumers more likely to buy these smart home products from? Yeah, so um, actually the, the research suggests that uh, consumers are most likely to buy digital smart home products from broadband providers, perhaps 20% from there. 15% um, from utilities, maybe 18% from specialist technology providers or technology websites, um, but only 4% from mobile operators, which is really very revealing when you look at the, the behaviours and characteristics of what's really happening in, in consumers' homes. So other parts of the research told us that, not surprisingly, 50% of uh, consumers think that um, it, the internet is fundamental to their social lives. Um, and a quarter of those consumers uh, believe that uh, m the mobile phone is the principal main way in which they get onto the internet. Um, that's up from 16% when we did the research in 2016. Uh, so there's quite a big shift there towards the mobile phones, um, but the mobile operator is not really relevant uh, in, 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 that, in, that, uh, in that story as yet. What can service providers do to increase smart home product adoption? Well, I think if you look at the, the mobile operators specifically, um, their challenge, I think, is that they've, they've not articulated a value proposition. Uh, the relevance of what they do and what they provide is, is not really coming through. Uh, so what we heard was that 
71% uh, of consumers are worried about the loss of personal data. 81% mm. uh, are actually worried that uh, the that smart appliances might get hacked from the outside. And if you look at that, that first statistic around the concern for loss of data, that's on the rise. You know, when we did the research in 2016, um, that was only 61% and it was only 52% in 2013. So what we, we're seeing is that the consumer, the household, is much more worried about the loss of personal data. There's much more awareness of that. So trust is a key thing. Uh, so actually, as you look at what uh, operators should be doing, should be providing, they need to be consistent, coherent about the value proposition. They need to solve real problems and they need to build on the trust proposition that they have. So actually, if you look at mobile operators worldwide, they have connectivity into the home for billions of connections. Billions of people buy mobile phone connections, and they could be the principal vehicle through which smart homes uh, and, and smart home connectivity is provided. But presently, they're not at the races, and there's a huge opportunity for them based on that connectivity and that trust uh, to be much more relevant than they are today. Data and trust is definitely very topical in this day and age. It certainly is. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time, Rob. Thank you. That's all for this episode. For more technology news, head over to www.uktech.news.